We have already taken a look at using trees for classification problems. We can also use trees for regression problems, as I've already mentioned. And the method is very similar to how it works for classification. Let's take a look at the few small differences that exist. Let's look at a simple small example file to fix the concepts. So here we have a file, a data file, which we have used earlier, I think. So we've got some number of people. I think this is 20 people. You've got their income and the family size and the amount of money that they spent on a certain vacation, right? So you can think of this scenario as occurring in a vacation resort. And the resort is trying to predict how much money each of their family, each of the families that visit the resort will, will spend. So you can think of it as if the resort has some advanced reservations and along with each reservation is information about each of the reservation, which is, and we are considering only two here, which is income and family size. And we also know that in the past, people have, you know, families that have visited the resort have spent certain money, certain amount of money. And this is the historical information that we are looking at. Okay. So now we've got the income, the family size, and how much money they spent at the resort. And the goal is to build a model to make predictions for the future when we know the income and the family size of families who have made reservations, but we don't know how much money they are going to spend, which is what we are trying to predict using historical data. Right. So given data like this, we could come up with some rules like this. Let's say one of the rules we come up with is if income is less than 95,000 and the family size is one or the family size is two, then the expenditure is $410, right? So somebody by looking at this data might come out with a rule which looks something like this, right? So, or somebody else may come up with another rule that says if income is less than 95,000 and family size is three, then the expenditure is 510. For now, don't worry about how somebody is coming up with these rules. So we're just saying we can look at data and then we can, if we are able to come out with rules, then we can use the rules for making predictions. So for example, suppose there is a new case that comes along and the new case has, let's say, an income of 80,000 and family size is one, right? So for that new case, what would we predict as the expenditure? The rule says we will predict the expenditure to be $410. Right? So that's the idea. That's what we are trying to do. Now, don't worry about how exactly we are finding out these rules because that's the whole process of the the regression tree method, just like we did in classification. So it's possible that given a data set, we may identify many, many rules like this. Okay. So let's see. For example, suppose we consider this first rule, income less than 95,000, family size is one or two, then expenditure is 410. Let's understand that a little bit more deeply. Okay, so that's the rule. And if you look at the data, the cases that satisfy this condition are these, right? So income is less than 95,000, family size is two, less than 95,000, family size is two, right? So there is no case in which the family size is one, but these are the cases in our data set that satisfy the rule. So for example, there's no other case where the, you know, both of these conditions are true, right? So here income is less than 95,000 for sure, but the family size is three. Here too, the income is less than 95,000, family size is three, right? So here, the family size is two, but the income is above 95,000, uh, right? So here you can see how uh, these are the only cases that satisfy the rule. And if you look at those cases and consider the expenditure by each of those cases, so for example, for the first case, expenditure is 350, second case, expenditure is 420, third one is also 420, fourth one is 350 and the fifth one is 510, right? So what we are doing there now is simply taking the average of all of those expenditures and that average turns out to be 410, okay? Uh, so this is the whole idea that first of all, through certain rules, you partition the data into smaller subsets. That is each subset that satisfies a particular rule and the prediction, if something satisfies the conditions for the rule, is simply the average of all of the uh, target attributes, target values. Okay, so that's how it works. So for the, again, for the next one, if you do the same thing, you find that the cases that satisfy it are these, 
and the average is 510 okay so this is really what we are trying to do here that we uh, take the whole set partition it into cases that satisfy a particular rule and simply take the average of those values for making predictions very simple very straightforward approach remember back in classification what we did was we took the majority rule of the cases that satisfied a particular rule here instead of taking majority cases because we have numbers we are taking the average so if you find many rules like this you can construct the rules in the form of a tree and here is the thing that says income is less than 95,000 family size is less than 2.5 which means it's basically 1 or 2 and the prediction is 510 okay and income is uh, less than 95,000 and family size is less than 3.5 which is greater than 2.5 and less than 3.5 which means family size is 3 then the prediction is 510 and so on and so on right so these are the first two rules that we actually explored earlier okay so once you have a tree like this you can make a prediction for any new case that comes along simply run it through the tree and whichever leaf node you land at and the value on the leaf node is the prediction for that particular new case right so once again just to recap the data you see here is historical data we are trying to create a tree based on the historical data and then use the tree for predictions for any new data that comes along right going forward this is history now going forward let's say a family with an income of 125,000 and a family size of 3 makes a reservation okay so this is real live data that is going forward and therefore we don't know the expenditure but once we have this tree we can use this tree to make a prediction for that expenditure right so again just like we've always done in this course use the historical data build a model use that model to predict going forward so what's actually happening is you build a tree and you know you run all the cases through the tree so some of the cases is, are going to land up here some here some here and so on Right? So this is the set of leaf nodes and what we will be def effectively doing is partitioning the entire data into a certain subset. Right? So here if you add up 25%, 25%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 90%, 100%. 100%. Right? So all the 100% of the data was here and 25% of the cases satisfy this rule which is income less than 95,000 family size uh, 1 or 2. So 25% of the cases satisfy that condition, 25% of the cases satisfy this condition, etc, etc. So basically what we are doing is partitioning your entire data into certain number of uh, disjoint sets of cases. Let's think a little bit about what kind of characteristics we want these sets to have. Now let us say that we device this rule of income less than 95,000 family size 1 or 2 and our prediction is 410 right now we already said that 25% of the cases are here which means n equals 5 5 of the cases are actually here 5 of the original 20 that we started with n equals 20 is our entire set so 5 of them are here now we say the, the 410 is basically the average of expenditure of those 5 cases okay now consider, let's suppose the actual values were, uh, you know, widely varying and the average was 410, but let's say you had some which were 200 and some which were 400, uh, 600, and then some which were somewhere in the middle, right? So if there's a wide variation, then this taking the average to make a prediction for that particular set may not be a very good idea, right? Because in reality, there's a lot of variation and we are just taking the average and making a prediction. So in future cases also, you can expect the same amount of variation. And therefore, a prediction you make for a case that satisfies this condition may not be a very accurate prediction. Okay. On the other hand, suppose all of the five cases that led to this 410 average, suppose all of them were very close to the 410 average that you have, meaning some are like 400, some are like 420, and a few are in the 410 range. Suppose all of them were pretty close and then in future if you make prediction, make a prediction of 410 
for cases that satisfied the, that particular condition, then your prediction is likely to be really close to the actual. Okay, so that's really what we are concerned about. That just taking the average for uh, may not be good, but taking the average may be pretty good if all of the cases that fall in that bin which satisfy the condition, if all of them have values pretty close to the average. Okay, so that's the whole idea. So what we're really trying to do is to try to get each of these sets as homogeneous as possible. In other words, we want all the cases within a particular set to have a target value which is very close to the average. Okay, Of course, exactly equal to the average will be the best, but that will not happen in the real world. So we want to divide the original data into sets which are as homogeneous as possible in terms of the target attribute. In this case, the target attribute is expenditure. So we want all of them to have expenditures which are very close to each other or to put it in a different way is to say that all those expenditures are very close to the average. So again, just to restate it, we want the sets to be as homogeneous as possible and the homogeneity is high when the expenditures are similar to each other. That is homogeneity of expenditures within a set. When they are all similar to each other, then we have high homogeneity. Otherwise, we have low homogeneity. Of course, high and low are not binary. It's a gradation from high to low. But this is the general idea that we determine the homogeneity based on how close the expenditure values are similar to the average within a particular set. So how do we measure homogeneity? It, we usually use the sum of squared deviations from the mean as the homogeneity, the measure of homogeneity. It's also called as the deviance. So in terms of formula, it would look like this. This is the summation sign 1 to n xi, which is the uh, an individual value minus x bar, which is the mean of all the values. So xi minus x bar, the whole square, tells you uh, the square deviation from the mean for a particular value, right? So you take the first value, take the difference from the mean and square that. Take the second value, take the difference from the mean, square that. Do that for all the values and add it all up, okay? So clearly you can see that if the values are all close to the mean, then each of the individual terms will be small and therefore the total will be small. And if the values are all far away from the mean, then this total, each individual squared value will be high and the total will end up being high, right? So this value, this measure of sigma i equals one to n, xi minus x bar, the whole square, that is called as the deviance. And what we are trying to do in a particular set is to keep the deviance as small as possible.